Huge thank you to Guns of Glory for sponsoring this video and this part of the series. We are putting a lot of time, effort, and money into building these things, and it's partners like that that make this possible. While we're spending money, that game is free to play. Come here, check this out. That's me, uh, strong jawed, chiseled, who's taking on his kingdom and going on to the rest of the world. Look at these are my these are all my friends. In, in this game, you get a you get an understanding of what's going on, and it gets you right into the world. Obviously, I'm uh, harvesting wood and food right now. So I got musket men. I want a musket. <laughs> I want this game makes me want to have a musket. <laughs> Well, Guns of Glory has been wonderful in supporting us. I ask that you take a look at supporting them as well. There's a link in the description for downloading the game, either on iOS or Android. Take a look at it. Yeah, where's Jared? We need to film the rest of this video. Dude, I just upgraded my castle to level seven. You gotta get over here. Regrettably, we are here back in the lab. Again, yo, another Eminem lyric coming at you. I'm gonna keep my head up. This is one of those sort of things where even I get annoyed of having these sort of setbacks, but this is, this is what happens when you rush projects, try and meet deadlines, here we are. So what we're gonna do is take a look at how much damage is done to the harness. The harness is cooked. We, I think we all know that, but it's also kind of fun to see what damage has been done. I've got the solution already here. Elliot from Turbo got me a setup that is gonna solve this problem better than ever before. I'm gonna be using the other Adaptronic only because the loom is available. This sort of connector here, these super seal connectors are available. He had that in stock, whereas this one comes from a Nissan setup. That's not as easy to find at the moment. I decided I'm gonna swap ECUs around just to make this work. These are called flying looms. A flying loom is about eight foot of the most beautiful variety of colors ever made and known to man. And each of them are unique, so that way you can identify the wire as it goes from start to end. These two pieces have slightly different purposes. This one carries almost all the sensors. It's actually got a twisted pair of the shielded wires for sensors like the trigger wheel which uh, is the one that we melted off before. It's got all of the shielding, and then it's got all the other sensors that we need and so on. A lot of these wires are not needed, so we're gonna go over this real quick. We're gonna go over also, you can see unsolicited, I'm gonna shout out Rye Wire at the moment. Those guys know what they're doing, and so I'm gonna take some inspiration from them. I don't build wiring harnesses for a living. They have Adaptronic modular harnesses in stock. They've come up with a solution to make things simpler and not have heavy power running through your delicate sensor wires. That's one of the mistakes I made on this harness. It never actually affected me, but I have the power line for, for the coils going through all the sensor lines. Uh, and if any of you guys are familiar with electronics, this is the basic concept of electronics. Power running through wires creates an electromagnetic field. Obviously, if you do a coil, you create a magnet, electromagnet. You affect sensor data the more you start putting power closer to the wires. Uh, enough to affect it fully, make a big difference? No, honestly, not really. The only one that's truly sensitive is this trigger sensor. Using electromagnetic sensing to tell you know whether you're on a tooth or not. Grounded all the way to the front, all the way to the back. I've got some issues at play with my harness. He's got this eight pin Deutsch douche connector that basically makes his setup modular. And I think that is so awesome. Uh, Ryan, I'm from Rywire, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a shout out and then I'm gonna take that as inspiration. I can't come up with a better solution. Why do I mention that? There's a handful of connectors from here to the Corvette system. And right now, I do have them all labeled, but they're these individual sleeve you know, setups like this. And it's decent, but that's just, that's just crap. Uh, those are definitely going to all go into a block that lets us connect the ECU through a block to the Corvette. The ECU will then also connect to the ignition system. So the ignition system isn't gonna be part of the ECU main wires. Why is that? This block goes to four coils. And really all he's doing here is supplying pow uh, relayed power. Power and this block from the harness and then everything else is, is out here. I'm gonna have it where I take that same concept but this harness is meant for how many injectors? How many, how many, how many coils are we gonna use? In this case we have four coils and four injectors. What happens when we wanna go semi-peripheral port and wanna add another set of injectors because it's E85? Now we need six injectors. What other engine do I have that uses six injectors? The three rotor. I wanna have it where it's more modular, that if we're gonna have four coils, you're never gonna add spark plugs to a two rotor. You're gonna have four spark plugs, that's it. Why don't you just plug this end that has four coils into my harness that has all eight on tap. All eight means that you could run a four rotor. So the idea is that this sort of modular thing sets me up between 
the two rotor and the three rotor if I want to swap back and forth, if I need to test anything. There's no cost to me to doing that because all I'm going to do is have, you can see here, these are labeled, you know, ignition one, ignition so on, ignition eight. I don't, we're not going to need, well, for the four rotor we might. I'll just put all, all eight of those to a connector. This car will use four, the three rotor will use six, and the four rotor, if we wanted to do that sort of testing, we'll use all eight. So we're going to do that with both the injectors and the ignition that's on that set right there. This one, let's go ahead. I'm curious, I want to see this. You're about to get lost in the sauce as soon as you open as that. As soon as this opens up. Hoping that it actually simplifies the sauce, that Gucci man gets his ice creams. See Jared, I know pop culture. <laughs> You're getting hit, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tupac. <laughs> 1700 AD. And this is more like Rapunzel with her long hair. It's simple. I think that's simpler. What do you think? That's simpler. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, this is all the shielded pairs. We aren't going to use all of these because piston engines have, uh, let's, look at the, let's look at the actual stats. Pin one directly correlates to this black wire right here. Pin one is the crank angle sensor one, meaning that wheel with tons of metal teeth. Under next to it, the red one, is crank angle sensor two. We don't have a crank angle sensor two. That's normally like cam trigger, that, that's other triggers for piston engines. Rotor engines just have one. That one can be disconnected. I, I, I'm apprehensive to take the, the shielded wire out because it's such a nice setup and potentially reusable. It's gotta go, it's gotta go. This, this gray one, I'm sorry, um, some of you guys might disagree with me, but the knock sensor doesn't really have a place in a rotary engine. Uh, these are engine grounds? Let's see. Pin 10 is signal ground. Oh, okay, so well, I'll click on it so you can see it. Pin 10 is signal ground. That's this green and black wire right here. They split it into multiple lines because they already know multiple signals, multiple sensors use their own private ground. And I, I mean as in, in the ECU world. You don't connect power ground to sensors. And the reason why is as soon as you run like your starter or anything like that, there are electrons just flowing through that cycle and it fucks up your signal. So in this case, it's isolated. Your oil temp, your oil pressure, your water temp, you're gonna see a trend here. Pressures and temp sensors all use this private sort of secret exclusive ground. This will get spliced a couple more times because you guys might think that I'm doing all this off the cuff and just talking just to talk. Oh no, 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 no. I'm just trying to share with you guys what I've learned. Oh, this ECU plug, it's gonna go up here. ECU. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's gonna be one eight pin connector, like Ryan's setup, for all the ignition, all eight ignition signals. And then there's gonna be another one that's gonna be like car stuff, the CAN bus, so that way I can hook up to my AEM dash, 12 volts in, so that way we can power the ECU. Clutch sensor, you know, like, hey, are you pressing the clutch in or not? Tachometer, to send the correct RPM to the tack. Fuel pressure relay, fan relay. This is just uh, kind of accessories. That'll be another one close to here. There'll be like two little offshoots here. This section of the harness will then go, preferably, not over the exhaust. And we're planning that this time. That even if we don't have a dump pipe, that this, is safely hidden like this. This will go in through the grommet, the weatherproof grommet here, right inside the car, and then come out right behind the upper intake manifold, and then split off the way it is that it wants to. Something that I have slept on for quite a while, this is the heat shrink that does not have any sort of adhesive inside of it. It simply shrinks to half the diameter of what it was as soon as the heat is applied to it. Something happens that's very magical when you use heat shrink in the proper setup. Let me show you this. In my traditional wiring harnesses, you'd have a signal line and then a ground, pin them, you know, you connect them into a sensor, connect them into the ECU, and away you go. I would zip tie them with the baby zip ties, and I, I did that for, you know, obviously not losing them, and then I got busy and left them that way. One of the things is called twisted pairs, and this comes from my IT background as well, is that you know, ethernet cables are twisted pairs. You'd have, you'd have the cable as twisted as much as possible up until it terminates. Ethernet cables, they'd be like little phone jacks, big phone jacks. If you untwisted them far enough, your gigabit internet connection would actually fail because the twisted pairs are separated. Same thing kind of applies here, but there's a lot more room for forgiveness in car wiring in that sense. Twisted pairs work well because both the ground and the sensor line 
are both related to each other. They, they both carry very similar, equal and opposite type of signals. Somebody can explain the electronics behind that further than I can, but this increases signal quality. So that was kind of cool, but there's another benefit to this. And let me show you on the other end. This is something I personally uh, discredited. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. The heat shrink, going back to the heat shrink. You can put heat shrink, just generic heat shrink on anything. When you mix it with the twisting, you get something really cool that happens. Let me show you how my previous wire harness worked. Okay, here we are, two wires. Oh, let's bend it, because you know, they've got to get it around that corner, got to get it through the firewall, and they're pulling. I can feel stress, oh, there you see, I can see stresses going on, and the wire's not gonna break, maybe immediately or anything like that, but you're stressing the wires independently, differently. When you twist them like this, they actually can respond to bending better than just separate, separate pairs. Both wires are actually ready to move in that angle. You use, in this case, heat shrink, and look at that. The, a bend angle, obviously you never want to try to bend it really far, but this is an experiment for me. The bend angle gets really sharp. Now the heat shrink isn't holding these two wires in a stiff pattern, and then, look at that. See, if I, if I pinch them, see how it's like fighting me? The wires slip and slide a little bit inside of the heat shrink, and they can bend around things. Two of you guys are like, oh, you're an idiot for not knowing that. Fuck off, first of all. <laughs> Quite frankly, just fuck off. What we're gonna do is buy really long ass pieces of this type of heat shrink. I see a lot of guys use the specific Raychem type. That stuff seems to be the kind of the common use. I don't have a pro or con about that. But we're gonna use generic heat shrink and it is also fuel resistant. All right, what we're gonna do is get all the way up to the wire's edge like this and then obviously crimp the ends into the sensors and whatnot and leave the tips exposed. So that way, first of all, we can actually identify what colors they are. And second of all, it gives us that little bit of room to move and get pieces on there. On the other end, this is something that's gonna be completely new to me that we're gonna go through is we're gonna have this go as far as this wire might separate from the other wires. Imagine four injectors, all four injectors are gonna kind of come from here and then you know, various lengths, but they're all gonna kind of sprout from the same spot. So we're gonna take an even larger piece and then make the base of that. Now, I did that a long time ago and hated it, and there was a piece I was missing. And again, I'm looking at inspiration from people that have done this really well. HP Tuners Academy, that, you know, they pay, you have to pay for their uh, videos. They're probably really good. Uh, maybe they're not, I don't know, I'm, and that, that's genuine. I, I didn't pay to see their videos, but some of their hints of their videos look really awesome. One of the things that all these guys do is when you have multiple small ones, say like that, just for example, and you have all of those connecting up to say something bigger. Well, this is gonna have a thicker piece of heat shrink. These all have smaller ones, and it looks like complete shit. Right? It will look like this. It'll literally look like this. It'll be, look like somebody who's wearing some pants that are way too small. You'll see all these wires right there. Well, there's a piece of heat shrink that's got glue on the inside. The insides of these coincidentally have the adhesive that once you heat them up, it melts and then it melts and kind of seals in the connection between all this. So it makes it more waterproof, which is the whole point. Cause as soon as you get it in there, oils, oil finds a way. It's like Jeff Goldblum again, uh, life uh, finds a way, oil uh, finds a way. That will help with all the splices. Something I really want you guys to see is that obviously I began twisting these pairs. Uh, that was something I was trying to do on the newer pieces. On the older ones, I didn't. All of this, all of what we're talking about is really cosmetic on this end. Other than melting the harness, the harness was fine and it really worked okay. There was, there was never an issue, there was never a signal having problems, but this is atrocious, but that's a visual thing. So I, I, I promised myself, and I, I really kind of give a commitment to you guys that I wanted to make it more professional because I don't need to be blowing engines, I don't need to be having those sort of issues. We got plenty of other fun things to have happen. This sort of harness needs to get cleaned up. Let's go ahead and take it off and see how bad the heat damage is to it. Heat shrink wouldn't have stopped flames, direct flames to that, but it is more heat resistant than just the bare wires, and so that could have also helped prevent that sort of damage. The other nice thing is that we can actually apply more heat shrink or we can apply the heat shielding easier to that bulk of wires, because one of the problems I had, this was just chance, is when we went and originally put that heat resistant material under the wiring harness to protect it, the trigger sensor bundle fell out. And that's why that melted and nothing else had a problem. The trigger sensor, I, I was trying to grab all the wires, missed that one, that's why that one cooked. So again, another reason why, yes, it is very much a visual upgrade, but 
visual turns into being able to diagnose things quicker and scoop up all the wires. The way that people like Rywire do their harnesses makes it easier to remove. It's all wide out like this, so it comes out easy. Whereas mine were straight up T's. You can imagine that's more like an anchor trying to pull it backwards. So a lot of great things there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this harness off. It's reluctant, but I wanna take a look at how bad the damage is. This hurts. I designed this knowing this would be the case that normally all I'd have to do is undo this sensor position right there and it would let me pull it back. EOD bomb, check. We're alive. We're gonna pull this out. Oh Jesus, is that melting? Yeah. Hold that up for the camera. We're probably gonna have to pull the battery because this wiring harness is integrated into this car very heavily. That held it. That held in. Look at that. That's a pretty beefy uh, zip tie. That that took that directly on. Okay. What else is caught? When I was telling you about the eight wires that are connect from the new system to the old system, these are all it right here. Boost controller, power to the coils, fuel and uh, pump kicking on system. Ignition on, sensed from the key. We're gonna have to keep this footage because I'm gonna forget all these even though they're labeled. Oh, it's ECU and fuel pump power, or fuel injector power. All of them are labeled for this very reason. Jarrett, uh, with your permission, I'd like to recreate a scene from a famous movie. Uh, no, man, I'm good on it. Uh, okay, thanks, I'm, I think that's the inspiration I needed. You ever see a classic Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he's a commando in the jungles, wrestler and commando? Uh, Jesse Ventura. There's a creature that rips one of their heads off and pulls their spine out. <laughs> like something like that. <laughs> I gave it my all. That was my Academy Award winning performance. I think the biggest damage isn't necessarily just uh, wires like this into each other, but the super fine wires inside of these uh, shielded cables melt into each other as well. Oh, those two were touching. Whatever those two are, they were touching. Ugh, that's all just... Oh my god, look at that. Ground and power just melted into each other. Thankfully all this is fused and relayed, but look at that. Those are just literally grounds and powers. Look at that. They were touching. Sensor ground into power. My god. Uh, this looks nothing like the quality harnesses that everybody else makes. It's painful, but it is time to move forward and do this right. As much as I have the pain of going through all of this and turning this into a beautiful wiring harness, I'm not gonna be making a full video on that. You guys know where we're gonna be. You know what we're all about. You know where I'm at. What we're gonna do is show you kind of the summary of how that, this turned into a nice wiring harness and then just get right back to firing this car up. I am so ready to make power. You don't understand. I don't like making videos about setbacks. I like making videos about making progress and the challenges with that. I wanted to share with you guys an actual video about the science behind wiring harnesses, but let's skip right to it. I have the next couple of hours of torture, but you guys can go watch uh, TJ with his new Supro until we come back and then make some serious power. <laughs> nice. The fuck, the fuck away. The fuck am I on? Nice, dude. Thanks. Hey, dude. Super nice. You know how much horsepower I want to make? I don't know, man, but nice. 69.